Okay, we're live. Hi, folks. We're back at it with um, Between Two Succulents. Wow, it's quite a Monday. I'm forgetting my own name and the name of the show. I'm Megan, the virtual bookseller, and talking to me this evening is the one and only Tori Peters. Hi, Tori. Hey, I'm really happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here too. So Tori is the author of the novellas Infect Your Friends and Infect Your Friends and Loved Ones, excuse me, and The Masker, which are both available for free on her website, ToriPeters.com. And her new novel, Detransition Baby, has been long listed for the prestigious Women's Prize and is available now at Charm City Books. Tori holds an MFA from the University of Iowa and a master's in comparative literature from Dartmouth. Tori rides a pink motorcycle. She splits her time between Brooklyn and an off-grid cabin in Vermont. She is goals. For the past few years, Tori has been a part of a trans literary movement based on trans people sharing their work amongst each other without barriers. And we are going to start our chat today with a little segment I like to call Pick Your Plant. So Tori, I'm gonna introduce you to two of my still living succulent collection. It's quite a, Quite a miracle over here. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each of them and then you can tell me which one is um, singing the song of your soul. Sound good? Gotcha, yeah, perfect. Can't okay. wait to meet them. So first up is this little baby who lives in my window. He's a prickly pear, he's a little bent, and when he is totally devoid of water, he shrivels up totally, he curls fully inward. But then as soon as I water him, he's starting to straighten up now. As soon as I water him within just a couple of hours, he's standing straight up again. I love that for him. And then next up is your classic jade plant in a polka dot pot. And um, something I learned about jade recently is if you want to propagate a jade plant, you your best bet of having success is to take it from a more mature older plant as opposed uh -huh. to a younger plant so wisdom wisdom we gotta, we gotta <laughs> leech off the wisdom of our elders <laughs> um so tell me which one is like speaking to you you know i actually think that the prickly pear is kind of ignoring me but that's a little bit like hot for me. That's like I like the <laughs> I like the aloof, uh, uncaring nature of that prickly pear. And now I, I really want to win him over. So I'm that's yes. my psychology. So I think uh, prickly pear. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work on. I want to work on the prickly pear. Our relationship. There's nothing. There's nothing like that aloof, cold mean person to just really get the really? juices flowing. I know. It's like, look, he's shriveled up. He doesn't care about me. He's just like, I want some water. I just want a drink. He just wants a drink. I just want some water. Yeah. <laughs> won't even look at you. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm not going to water this plant, but I am going to win it over with charisma. So yeah, I approve of this for you and for myself, frankly. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about your debut novel, Detransition Baby. It's about three women, uh, transgender and cisgender, whose lives collide after um, an unexpected pregnancy forces them to confront their deepest desires around gender, motherhood, sex, and you dedicated the book to divorced cis women. So I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about um, the different layers and meanings of family in the novel. Yeah, I'd love to. It's like there, there's a bunch of different ways that there's that I'm doing family. Some are just the ways that the characters want actual kind of uh, family structures as we know it. They're looking to maybe be mothers or looking to raise children together. But also I'm trans and this book is about trans community and there's a lot of ways that we um, end up oftentimes mothering each other when someone transitions, they need help. They oftentimes need to like know how to, where to find hormones, how to dress, how to care for themselves, how to um, just kind of how to live. And oftentimes we end up as mother daughter figures to each other. So there's twinning of kind of literal structures of family, metaphorical trans family, and then also the ways that there's like sistership. So I, I dedicated the book to um, divorce cis women because I actually think there's a lot of parallels between um, transition and divorce where oftentimes in divorces, for instance, you know, you live your life a certain way, 
having inherited certain ideas and biases about the world, and then you get to a point where there's you know, maybe a point of failure, and the stories that you've told yourself and the ideas you have about the world aren't really serving you anymore, and there's a break. And at that point, you have to start over, and you can't get bitter, um, and you also can't reinvest in the illusions that brought you to that first failure, which is also the story of transition and you know with gender. So, so to the the ways that I'm trying to do family is to actually create lots of parallels and, and look at all the different ways that we might have structures to support each other and make relationships with each other and um, kind of re oftentimes reinvent what what family might mean, especially when you throw in queerness or transness and, and you know, maybe break a little bit the conventional ideas of, of gender roles. You know, praise be for authors making parallels because it's these light bulb moments are just the best. So thank you for sharing that because it's just so it's so cool to see like, oh, I never would have thought of that parallel, but that makes so much freaking sense. Thanks, Tori. Of course. So speaking of light bulb moments, we're going to move on to a little activity we call the lightning round. It's very, very important. The stakes are very, very high. I feel got, I'm nervous. I know. <laughs> I am too. Yeah. I don't know why. Because I'm not answering the questions. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask you three questions. They're very important. They're very hard hitting. This is right. journalism. You're going to answer the questions. If you get them correct, one person watching on our stream is going to win a Charm City Books magnet. Hold on to your hats. Huge Don't stick. crash the server. That's right. A branded magnet. Can you believe? No pressure. Tori, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. I, I feel okay. the, I mean, I feel the pressure, but I'm ready. I, I think this is the culmination of, of this book. Yes, this is it. Who knew? <laughs> Here we go. Question one. Detransition baby has already been optioned for television. Already been optioned. Okay. If your life were turned into a scripted series, what shows would that series draw inspiration from? And please, wrong answers only. True Detective. <laughs> Which season? That, uh, I think the first, I think that um, the like sort of paranoid ramblings of Matthew McConaughey and my own sort of laconic, uh, you know, cigarette smoking, uh, misquoting philosophers is there's a kind of, you know, we have a little resonance with each other. Yes, yes, yes. I approve of that. And not only do I approve of it, it was 100% objectively correct. We're moving on to question two. Is there a book that you have read recently that you can't get out of your mind? The Old Drift by um, Namwale Serpao, which I'm reading, I'm rereading right now, um, just to kind of see how she put it all together. Yes reinvestigating. You get double points for rereading and you are correct. We're moving on to our final question, blazing into question three. Who are two or three, mm, a few, a handful up and coming trans authors that you should think people should bump to the top of their reading list? I always recommend that people read T. Fleischmann's Time is a Thing that a Body Moves Through. I think in 10 years, it's gonna people are going to look back on it as a classic. I'm really into this book, Lot by Shola Van Reinhard, which right now is published in the UK and I think it has to be imported here. But she's looking for an American publisher. And I think once she gets out, like it's going to be a, a breakout moment. And then lastly, Jackie S has this book called Daryl, which is a, um, she's a trans author, but she's writing about the cuckold lifestyle. And uh, it's speaking of parallels that you'd never expect. It's pretty brilliant and it's hilarious. So Daryl by Jackie S on Clash City Books. Okay, Clash I'm gonna books. I'm gonna sidebar. When I hear cuckold, I think Shakespeare. Is there another <laughs> meaning to cuckold that I don't know? <laughs> it, Should we it, not talk this about is, this? This is gonna be a learning moment. Uh, cuckold is a lifestyle. Um, I mean, it's, people like sort of right wing people have been using it as an insult recently, but it's. Um, a lifestyle where for married couples where usually the man in the relationship has a sexual fetish for seeing his wife with another man making him a cuckold in the shakespearean oh. sense so it's kind of like a swinging 
with uh, kind of a, a particular, like very contemporary shame thrown into that swinging. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow, I'm like learning so much today. Yeah, and I really too. hope my mom and Davin's mom are watching on the Facebook <laughs> screen. <laughs> It's a very, it's well, a very funny book. It's social commentary. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like it might not be, but it, it is. The that's book. awesome. Not the cuckold lifestyle. That's just, <laughs> that's just its own thing. Well, you know, to <laughs> each his own. So thank you for taking me on that little walk, that journey. Yeah. On that journey, we got three billion extra points. You have just totally dominated the lightning round. Three for three correct. Congratulations, someone on our stream. Joe, are you monitoring the stream by any chance? Any names you want to throw at me as a winner? Oh, uh, we got nothing right now, Megan. Okay, then this that's, magnet is all mine. That's oh. how I I was planning I was planning for you to win it. That was my goal all along. Nice job. Oh <laughs> wow. So kind. I feel good. I feel good. I feel like we're a team. <laughs> I do too. We did this together. We got through that grease lightning round together. So Tori, we've gotten through, we made it. The culmination of your book has finally happened today, April 12th at 5 42 PM. What's next for you? Um, I'm, this is true. I'm considering moving to Colombia for a little while. The country? The, yeah, the country. Yeah. It's a Cartagena. Uh, my girlfriend has a sabbatical and uh, she she's like got a couple months to do whatever she wants. And uh, she went there once, uh, she has some friends there and they're like, you should come live here for a little while. And I, we're considering it, we're considering it. Might be the move. It might be the move. That sounds great to me. <laughs> I'll come visit I mean, you in well, Colombia. It well, is great. This is what I hear. I mean, I'd say that never having been, but you know, word on the street. Word on the street. Everybody on the street is talking about the weather in Colombia and they say it's great. Will I you love be that. able to bring your pink motorcycle there? No, she's gonna just she's gonna guard my house while I while I'm gone. She's just gonna she's like a she's like a little guard dog, you know, keeping it keeping it safe. <laughs> That's a security system I can really get behind. So, Tori, um, before we close, are there any organizations, causes, charities, mutual aid funds, groups, anything in general that you want the people to know about? Yeah, um, there's uh, an organization in New York called Glitz. It's run by Kayan Dorosho, um, oftentimes assisted by Cecilia Gentile. They're an organization that provides housing for Black trans uh, people and oftentimes who are getting out of prison, like Rikers. They were the people who spoke at the March for Black Trans Lives this summer after the, during the George Floyd protests and where um, 15,000 people came out to hear them speak and they raised over a million dollars to, for housing for Black uh, trans people getting out of prison. It's, they're pretty amazing. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, thank you, Joe. Right on it. So that's Glitz. Mm -hmm. Head to the internet, folks, to learn more and support. And that's, I, I think that's a perfect place to end today. Tori, I'm just so appreciative for your kind spirit and donating your Monday evening to the cause of Between Two Succulents. Thank you um, for chatting with how me. Could, how could I miss the culmination of my book? You know? <laughs> how could you? So. This is one moment you don't want to miss. Yeah. Friends, thank you so much for oh, tuning if in. If somebody drops their name in the comments, they could win. If anybody's watching, drop your name. You, you could win a magnet. You've got 30 seconds. I'm going to sign off real <laughs> slow. If you want a magnet, just drop, drop any affirmation for us in the comments. Say something nice to us, okay? It's Monday, and um, we need it. Um, Tori Peters is the author of Detransition Baby. It's available now at Charm City Books. You can order it at charmcitybooks.com. Tori, once again, thank you so much. And um, I'm I'm really hoping you move to Columbia because that sounds like quite the adventure. <laughs> thank you. I uh, I can't tell if I'm hoping or not, but it may it may well happen either way. 
We shall see. We'll wait to hear all about it. Friends, thank you for joining me tonight. Remember to keep washing those hands, loving your friends from afar, and uh, wearing your masks. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody stay on, but I'm going to take you off the stream for a second.